Uh, hello, everybody. This is our fourth episode of uh, Interview with a Pro Player. Um, today we have with us uh, Joel Freeman. Uh, I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Joel Freeman. Hello, everybody. And uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, yeah, I'm from Colorado. I'm 27 years old and I've been playing disc golf. I, I guess I first tried it in 2011. I've been playing professionally uh, since the end of. 2015 so a little bit more than uh six years almost seven years yeah that sounds good you know i've been you've been playing quite some time now already and it feels pretty great to do this as a you know as a living yeah it's amazing i um sometimes i just look at my life and i i can hardly believe that it's real it's it's an amazing opportunity um of course it comes with hard days and bad days and uh problems just like any other job but um but it really is an amazing opportunity um i have the opportunity to travel with my wife which is which is just a huge blessing for me um and so yeah just an amazing experience to be able to travel do what i love throw throw discs all over the most beautiful parks in the country and uh explore explore all over the giant country that i'm from mm -hmm. and uh yeah it's an amazing amazing experience and a lot of amazing stories that i'll be able to you know tell my kids when i'm older and uh yeah it's an awesome an awesome experience yeah definitely like i can imagine like just you know playing around here in estonia you can see some really amazing places and you know us is as big as it gets and you know there are some really amazing places how has your season been so far it has started off really good i'm very thankful for because basically in in 2018 i had one really good tournament the las vegas challenge that was kind of my my breakout and then i won an a tier um but those were kind of the only two highlights in the entire kind of front half of my season that year uh, I was trying to just kind of learn how to play under pressure, how to battle with the pros and trying to cash at these tournaments, the, at big tournaments. 2019 was similar. Um, I didn't really have a great start and it was more the second half of my season that was, that was good. And then 2021 last year, I feel like it was kind of the same way. The first kind of four, five, six months we're pretty slow, not not the best start. And then the end of the season was good. And so this year is the first time that I've really started well at the beginning of the season. Uh, and so it feels really refreshing, feels like a really, really nice change of pace. Yeah, exactly. Like we have been seeing you quite a lot on the, on the you know, Disco Network and everywhere as well. And I, I looked up, you already had a uh, first win in the first tournament you played this year, I think. Uh, yeah. Then really good place in Waco and in Texas, so you know yep. uh, that was pr pretty good to see that you know you, you're back in action and you're actually you know winning or you know doing quite well this year in the, you know start of the yeah. season. Yeah. What kind of um, tournaments do you like to play the most? Like you, you mentioned, the first half is always um, harder. Is it more because it's open and and do you like prefer food wood? courses more which is the second part of the season usually i ask myself the same question why 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 don't you play better in the first half but i i try to be a player who has no weaknesses i i i want to be able to succeed in any on any course um but i do prefer wooded courses so i think i have I have enough distance, enough I can throw far enough and well enough to um, to play well at in the first half of the season. But I I think it's less enjoyable for me. I think I enjoy the courses less. I have less fun, and and therefore it's harder for me to play as well. Maybe so. So I think that's a mental weakness, and so I'll be trying to stay as focused as I can, even on the courses that I don't like very much. And that should help. But I definitely prefer wooded disc golf. I, I tend to 
rise to the top when uh, there are a lot of obstacles on the course. So yeah, I'm I'm quite similar in that sense. I like wooded courses as well. It's always uh, a little bit more interesting what lines you can come up with, and you know, just hitting yeah. the cap perfectly is just. Uh, you know, it's different kind of feeling than hitting a, yes, I don't know, 400 no feeling feet. Like <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and I I like the creativity involved yeah. in wooded disc golf. I think in when you're in the open, you just throw a lot of the same shot over and over again. And I like that when you're in the woods, you find yourself in situations where you have to throw a disc that you haven't thrown in a week or you have you have to throw from a position like a with your body that you've never quite tried before you know i like that you have to get really creative um and throw really unique shapes and unique lines and things i actually understood this year that i prefer better the worst the situation is <laughs> so <laughs> i don't know if you heard about the Estonian winter championships that we had i don't know if silver just a little bit said, not yeah, much but but basically, it was it was minus degrees outside. Uh, it was uh, very hilly. Um, uh, it was full ice, and then wow. it was basically if you are let's say you are um, ten meters out of the basket and you're out like down downhill throwing the but like the butter, and then if you miss the basket, then you're most likely fifteen or twenty meters the other side because it's gonna just yeah. keep flipping, and you know it's just. <laughs> It's just, you need yeah. to be very confident what you're doing so it's it's a totally different kind of disc golf wow yeah <laughs> it was That's pretty cool. pretty different experience and you need you know, like you said you need to do some new stuff with discs you haven't done before so yeah i i saw you're playing tournament this weekend as well right yeah round one is today it, it starts on thursday instead of friday so that's kind of strange but what do you expect from this tournament this tournament is one of my favorite uh tournaments of the year um i this was my first win on tour um five, you know four years ago um in 2018 i i beat uh ricky and chris clemens and johnny mccray and i this was before i you know i had only been on tour for two months mm -hmm. and i and so i won this tournament i have an amazing a uh, really close friend who always gives me a place to sleep, who gives me a room to stay in. And I'm I'm good friends with the tournament director as well. So it just feels like a, like a second home to mm -hmm. me. And uh, so I just love, I just love playing this tournament. Uh, the, <clears throat> as far as the registration list, it's the two highest rated players are myself and Andrew Presnell, who's a, a close friend of mine. He's rated 1032. I'm rated 1033. So we're <laughs> we're right there. And so um, it's going to be fun to play with him. I, I expect to be on the same card with him probably all three rounds, most likely. But but yeah, hopefully I don't have as much competition this weekend. So hopefully I'll give myself a good chance at winning. Mm -hmm. But you never know. And so I'm just going to do my best and enjoy my my time here in Arkansas. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's like you said, it's a little bit less competition, so you can enjoy the actual game a little bit more, in, in my opinion. Um, yeah. The next tournament next weekend is one of the tournaments that um, everyone is saying they're waiting for the most this year. What's yeah. your opinion on the, you know, Champions Cup? Yeah, um, I like the course. Yeah, wooded, but definitely feels professional, you know, challenging and long. And they they do a good job at reinventing the course year after year. They've changed, they've made little changes. And of course, not every change is always good, but the the point is that they are, they have a, a good perspective on trying to make it better each time mm -hmm. um, the pros come back. And so, yeah, I enjoy the facility. I enjoy the uh, the excitement around it and um you know it's a four-day event and i get are are people still using the word major are people still calling it a major yeah event? i think so it's, it's even in in like discord network it's marked as as major cool so yeah <laughs> so it's the first major of the year mm -hmm. and so yeah i'm excited about it it's going to be a lot of fun 
yeah, definitely. And, you know, everybody from Estonia is going to be back out there as well. You know, Albert is playing this whole season without stop. And I think he's in Tallahassee this weekend. But yeah. you know, next weekend, everybody's at Champions Cup. And like you mentioned, Silver and Kristin and, and Katie are traveling back to US now as well. So they will all be there. Cool. Um, <clears throat> have you played any tournaments outside of uh, US? No, I wish. Oh, every time I... Every time I watch coverage of uh, European courses and watching the the Finnish Pro Tour and and everything, it's uh, it looks amazing. I I can't wait to to see some play some European events. Um, I hope it's in my future. I hope it's I hope it'll happen soon. Yeah, definitely. Like most likely, a lot of Estonians and and Finnish people have always you know told you as well that you know you're welcome to come over and hang out with us and play play all the tournaments you can but <laughs> i know yeah. it's it's a busy season always and uh, you need to you know stay focused throughout um, the whole you know tournament yeah. list that you have throughout the year i think if the right um if the right plan was put together between you know myself and maybe some of my sponsors then 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 i'll i'll make it over but but yeah maybe not this year maybe maybe next year i don't know <laughs> So. Yeah, nowadays it's been always a little bit more complicated as well, you know, due to COVID and and all all lot of sorts of different stuff and what's going yeah. on in the world. It's it's always getting it feels like it's getting more complicated day by day, even though like yeah. COVID is like over in in here, it doesn't feel like it anymore. But yeah, it still makes things harder. I think you mentioned you know you're you're getting well quite well you know getting along quite well with some of the Estonian players. Who else do you know from you know around here? There is you know quite a lot of players most likely playing uh, you know, constantly over there in the US and you know in general. Yeah, um, yeah. I try, like I said, I'm. I think Silver and and Kristen and Albert. I, I'm I'm probably closest with with Silver as far as like the Estonian players. I really enjoy interacting and just saying hello to all the European players. I I know. It's probably very intimidating coming to just a whole new um, area, and since they are the minority, you know they're the they're the outsiders. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. probably hard to to know kind of who's going to be friendly or who who to talk to or who to ask for help or whatever. And uh, and so I try to I try to just say hello and and just start a start a friendship. Um, I think my other closest friend would probably be Vina Makeda. Mm-hmm. We we've played several practice rounds. We played a couple of times on the same card in tournaments. I stayed with Vina and Seppo and Nico. I've gotten to know Lucas uh, fairly well, and then I just met Niklas um, Niklas Antila for mm-hmm. the first time at Texas State Championship. So. So yeah, I know I know a little bit of Finnish and a little bit of Estonian, <laughs> and so I'll always, I'll always yell "moro, moro, moro" from across the. Well, it's it's totally the same thing, basically. Where some words are different, but uh, you know, I have never learned Finnish. But if they speak like slowly enough, then I can ha- you know understand half of it just because it's yeah. so similar. Uh, yeah. You know, even even for example, the national anthem is the same tune, exactly same oh. tune, different <laughs> words. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um nice. but yeah it's like it's good to see that you know from like you said from finland a lot of more people are going over there and playing you know the major tournaments and uh, you know participating in the whole pro tour scene and same here in estonia you know this year we got the addition of katie going there uh, yeah. of course other players joining in here and there as well but it's good to see that more people are getting out there and you know it's yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's very always, exciting it's it's really fun to see, you know, I, at the end of uh, Music City Open, I, you know, I congratulated Laudi on his hot, hot round and gave, gave him a hug. And um, yeah, it's, it makes it a lot more fun to see all these new uh, players, you know, and uh, especially someone like Katie who has, you know, she has potential to, to win at one of these weekends. So hopefully, hopefully she'll, um, yeah, show her skills and and uh, get on some some lead cards soon. Have you noticed a little bit difference between you know Finnish uh, Estonian players versus U.S. players? 
Yeah, uh, I don't I don't think a really big difference um, necessarily, partially because, you know, I've seen thousands of of different American styles, you know, mm-hmm. and so ev- everyone just plays a little bit differently, no mm-hmm. matter who you are from one American to another, uh, you know, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I see a little, I see some patterns, you know, and I think the European style, um, it seems like they, they'll kind of line up with their arm way out in front of them before they, you know, throw a backhand or, yeah, I feel like sometimes they, you're in Europe, I think people putt a little bit harder, but, but yeah, I, little little things but mm-hmm. but mostly it's just fun to fun to watch you know yeah watch them, a, them come and show their skills yeah exactly game game likewise it's it's not that different like like said people have just different styles of approaching everything yeah. a lot of people have said that you know estonians especially leading with silver have quite a lot of uh, or big forehands i would say uh but nowadays yeah. it's you know getting more common over there as well because it's just need it at some point you know in in some way yeah Um, yeah i don't i don't see i feel like i don't see the fins throwing forehands very often yeah yeah exactly they they have they have forehand but but not not as often as as a lot of americans Mm. yeah and like i've been to us myself and the biggest difference for me was uh, not in this golf but personality wise because in in our yeah. opinion, Estonians and Finnish tend to be a little bit more quiet. And while yeah. you know, Americans are like <laughs> they're living out of themselves basically, and they want to yeah. <laughs> experience yeah. all the emotions. <laughs> yeah. No, I I asked Niklas if there's anything that that he didn't expect, and he's <laughs> he Niklas and Vina uh, went on this little story about. Um, grocery bags like bags at the <laughs> store like americans will put like every item in a new bag, bag. <laughs> because because the bags are so cheap they're so weak that they'll rip if you put mm-hmm. too much in there and so you know i <laughs> i'm like they i'm like they have better bags in in finland like, oh yeah we have much <laughs> better much better grocery bags what's your like maybe if we get back to this golf and in general in you know, your touring and so on what's your like biggest goal this year and you know in general like what what do you expect out of 2022 basically the the main big thing that i haven't done yet is just win uh like an elite series event i i want to see myself uh take first place in in some big uh, either elite series pro tour or or major or something um, just get get that first win checked off uh, you know the the list and and hopefully if it if it comes soon then maybe I'll get more than one mm. this year but I gotta I have to get that first one uh, first but other than that I think just I have a I have a unique personality that I can be hard for people to like read they, the hard, hard for people to tell what I'm, what I'm thinking or how I'm feeling. Um, and so I, I'm a very straight shooter. Like I tell, I say exactly what I mean all the time. And so I think sometimes that can come off as, as like rude or, or, or mean or negative or something. Um, but I really just, I really just like to communicate very clearly, and um, and so sometimes I, I feel like I don't do a good job with, um, like with the fans or the people watching, um, and so I want to learn how to just practice, um, just being, being really kind to people and just uh, prioritizing love. Like I want to love people well, and that's that's important to me. Um, and I think if I think no matter how well I play, if I don't have a good perspective and a good attitude, then it's harder to be proud of playing well. So so mm-hmm. I always want to be um, <clears throat> practicing and training my my perspective and my attitude, doing a good job of 
um, building relationships and, and just loving the people around me. I think that's, that's important as well. So that's a, that's a goal that I try to hold above, above anything else. Smile, smile more often. I, I look all, I look all grumpy when I'm playing. Mm -hmm. I think it's just because I'm focused, but uh, yeah. And that's, <clears throat> that, that's, you know, exactly what you said, you know, you look really focused when you're playing, mm -hmm. then people might think you're like angry or something, but it's not the case. Yeah. It's never usually the case. <clears throat> and yeah. for some people, you know, just being straight out honest and saying what you think is, is a little bit hard and, uh, you know, they might take it the wrong way you don't actually mean it to, you know in a bad way in that sense you've played a few tournaments now this year um mm -hmm. who has impressed you the most this year like other players i think i the only person i can think of that stands out is is chris dickerson which of course you know chris dickerson impresses everybody so <laughs> you know of course he he's <laughs> he's an easy answer but but I've I've learned a lot from Chris already this year. Uh, just we've we've played a few times, and yeah, just a couple little conversations we've had, and just different things um, that I've noticed about his game. Um, he, I really I have a lot of respect for him. He's he's one of my favorite players, and yeah, I have I have a, a lot of respect for him as a person and as a player. Uh, I respect his his game and the way he the way he plays, the way he thinks about the game as well. Um, and so, like I said, I've already learned, I have already learned from him this year. I guess I'll, I, I think one more name, I'll say, I say Niklas. Playing with Niklas, I've, I've played, I only played a practice round with him, but um, the control that 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 man has over his angles with his backhand is just unbelievable. It was really, really fun to watch him throwing crazy hyzer flips and just mastering angles. So Niklas impressed me as well. And he's still quite young as well. So he has like the whole yeah. career, you know, ahead of himself. So yeah, just taste it. And I think he can do great things in the future as well. So yeah, it sounds really good. In talking about the worlds, you know, getting the worlds uh, or getting the world championship title, you know, it's uh, it's you know everybody's dream basically. Uh, looking sure. at the, you know the first uh, or the start of the season, who do you think would be uh, good, you know, contention in their in MPO or FPO field? Well, let's see. I think Katrina would be a good pick for FPO. Although it is going to be, I think, on a little bit more of an open style course. Um, and so, I mean, you know, Paige, Katrina, and Kristen are all really good picks, in, in my opinion. Um, those three, I've, it just depends on who gets into a, a rhythm. I think if Paige, once Paige gets going, she's really hard to keep up with. Um, but Cat has started strong and Cat is Cat is a really hard worker. She's I think she's motivated and she's adjusted well to her new discs and um working on her putting form a lot and so I think as far as MPO gosh if Eagle is healthy you know he's going to be a big threat. Drew Gibson has also um picked up his game a lot. Um over the last two years. Um, and then and then Ricky, I don't know, Ricky might have to be my number one pick. He he just impresses, you know, he he comes out strong over and over and over again. So and he he does well in like open courses, making those big putts and everything. So yeah, those are some of the names that I think of. Those are cool picks, but what's what's interesting for me is that majority of the guys that we you know have talked about today uh actually changed their sponsorship this year which is like ricky changed yeah. uh chris changed uh you know, katrina changed so you know it's yeah. kind of interesting to see that everybody's doing quite well with the new discs and uh, yeah like for me it's uh, like we expected a little bit less maybe you know time to get used to it or something but yeah 
it's been so quick on their side like they're yeah. right from the first tournament they're like catching and you know it's on point all the time so it's been yeah yeah it's very impressive i i think um you know i think every every disc i think we're everyone is constantly learning all their discs so i think you know every time you hit a tree or you hit you know some pavement or something then your disc flies a little bit different afterwards so i think daily players every player is is slightly relearning their discs constantly so i think it's a process that that happens no matter no matter who you are no matter you know yes there's obviously definitely still an adjustment when you switch sponsors but um but i think it's a familiar process uh for you know especially for the top level players we're used to studying the flight of each disc in our bag uh constantly but to maybe wrap it up a little bit what would be your um like biggest hint uh for players uh, to improve basically um i just think video uh that's that's my thought i this is maybe a tip that's already maybe people already know that they should do this but i think it's so important uh you might you you probably don't know what you really look like uh, like and even i think slow mo video is really helpful because that really shows the little things uh even if you do watch yourself vid on video you probably don't notice a lot that's happening. It all happens very quick and it goes right by, but it, in slow motion, to pay attention to each little foot and your hips and your hand and your whatever, um, you can really learn a lot. Um, and even though you think you're smooth and strong and your form is good, as soon as you watch the slow-mo, it's like, ugly you find a lot of stuff to work on so every time i watch slow-mo i come up with more things to improve more things to work on and so that's my recommendation um, to anyone if they want to improve just you know take the youtube videos and all the tips that you've heard about form and then take video of yourself and and try to make what you're doing match what the uh, what the pros recommend or mm -hmm. or whatever you find uh, in other videos or whatever. Yeah, like that's definitely a really good tip, and I've tried it like a few times myself. And you know, mm. just I had one like for example in my case there was a case where I saw that I started pulling through a little bit too early, and so I lose the strength. Mm -hmm. And after seeing that, I just extended a little bit more, and it it lined up the timing and i instantly got like a, a bigger snap out of the throw with backhand so that's just, awesome yeah like uh, and, using this small tip basically yeah and don't don't be afraid to choose different angles too that's the other nice thing about filming yourself is you get to pick exactly where the camera is and so shoot from behind shoot from one side shoot from the other side um you know learn as much as you can about what your form looks like and that's that's another so another really big benefit from filming yourself is you get to pick the mm -hmm. angle i feel that's a really good tip and uh, it's something that hasn't mentioned in our show yet but do you have anything else you want to say yeah so thank you to uh innova discs infinite discs zone apparel ridge roller uh, Schaefer Sports Management, Disc Golf Threads, and Fisher Disc Golf. I've got some some really cool stuff going on uh, with some of my apparel items. I know for anybody out there who likes bright colors, um, I do as well. And so best place to follow me is on Instagram. Uh, you can also look at my YouTube channel and hopefully you enjoy and learn some things there. Um, but on my Instagram, there is a website, a link in my bio where you can find 
ev everything, any merchandise, my signature discs, my clothing um, collection. So you guys can buy your own strawberry shirt, uh, like the one that I had in Waco. Um, so thank you everyone for tuning in and thank you for just rooting for me or supporting me in any way. I really appreciate um, the excitement about whatever, a disc, uh, the Gator 3, or a shirt that you want to buy. Uh, yeah, enjoy it. And thank you for the support. And Sim, thank you for having me. Am I saying your name right? How do you say yes. your name? Yeah, it's Sim. It's like, it's like Sim. Sim, yes. It's, it's a long one. But yeah, thank you for you know participating in the show. It was really nice to have a chat with you, uh, get your thoughts and insights into everything. And uh, it was, you know, thank you. Thank everybody for just listening in and watching this as well. So uh, it was really nice to talk to you as well, Joel. Awesome. Yeah, it was a pleasure. So, yeah, thank you again for having me. It was an honor to be here. And uh, yeah, and thanks one more time to everybody watching. We appreciate you tuning in. Yeah, thank you for tuning in.